Hello everybody, welcome to the official replay cast of the Group C final round match between Truk and Kelethorn. I can show you what the group stage looks like after two games. As you can see, a victory for Truk will see him top the group regardless of what happens in the Jimmy Fantastic 2 Mish game. Kelethorn has an outside chance of qualification if he wins. But um, Kelethorn will need a victory. Uh, Truk could also qualify with a draw or maybe even a loss potentially. So um, it's a lot higher pressure for Kelethorn than it is for Truk. Um, you can see that they're both green, so we're going to go red and blue to be able to see what the hell is happening. I can tell you that Truk is from Chile and qualified through the Rebel qualifiers. And Kelethorn is French and qualified through the Belgian Bowl, big and Belgian Bowl. So, um, Truk won the toss, chose to receive. He's got three guards. He's got a dirty player, Skellington, with 14 players. He's leaning into the fouling. Only three ghouls, a block, and a wrestler. And, yep, that's right. And Kelethorn has a lot of skills because he's over the lines, so he does get extra skills. He's got three guards, a block ogre, a tackle blitzer, a couple of wrestlers, a skills slayer, actually, a skills thrower. But he's got a block catcher and a sneaky git halfling that he's fielding on defense. Quick snap, not super impactful. with block which gives him this 3D oh and he only goes a 2D on the ogre what? I mean it's only going to be a 2D anyway but I mean hits him with the white I guess he's going to like mummy blitz Oh god, yeah, the halfling is ammo, yeah. <laughs> oh dear, what a play. I'm not blitzing with block, because they've already both punched. I guess could have blitzed with this guy, right? But then he needs him to pick up the ball. And he gets it. Is he going to foul the ogre? It is fixed skull. But, you know, he's taking dirty player. A zombie ball carrier. <laughs> oh dear. How unlucky it must be to roll a one on your big guy. Imagine just rolling it like six times in a row. That would be a that would be a bad decision to do that. <laughs> but uh maybe maybe Calif maybe surely nobody would do that in a game. Three D instant. Oh, dead, 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 dead. There is no apo on the. Uh... No, there isn't an apo on the other lines. Okay, but I mean he's not going to use it on a dead anyway. I would have three D this guy as well personally. But he's going to two D blitz him. Has to re-roll. Only gets a push. The problem with this is he's, he's basing the uh, Slayer, right? I would have maybe blitzed the Slayer. He did get the follow-up hit here. But the Slayer can actually punch you, so maybe maybe, uh, maybe blitz the Slayer was an idea. He's also on AV9+, plus, isn't he? Oh, wow. There's the foul on the Ogre. And the removal. And the Apple happens on the Badly Hurt, so... Wise decision in the end to not up all the dead. Of course, that did give him an extra zombie, so not too relevant, though, with how many players he's already got. I guess what it does mean is that he's definitely going to foul every single turn for the rest of this half now. So this is a nightmare for Kelethorn here. I was happy when I saw he didn't have a goblin, yeah. Really happy. So yeah, he just has to blitz a dude and stand in the way. No, 
<laughs> we're going to foul this. Uh, we're definitely going to foul this Slayer. Both downs good because he hasn't got blocks. He's a rubbish old world alliance dwarf. I'm not really a fan of the base there. I get it right, like I get the gang base to like make him have to dodge. You know, force a dodge or maybe he's get a hit, but I would just I would just uh cage and not care about it. Or you know, use them over here to protect this white, maybe, something like that. Actually, he does get the two dice go, which could have killed him, so yeah. Oh, wow, the sneaky get foul on the mummy. You'll do nothing. Turn four panic. Are we going to blitz a halfling? <laughs> could do. He does. Three dice on the sneaky git. Doesn't get him. <laughs> I feel like maybe it was better to three dice with block there, right? Just because he's got dodge. I feel like the uh, ball carrier blitz on him was better. Slayer again, AV9 plus, does nothing. Yeah, I mean, this is really good. Like, if you, if you can just keep getting these fouls as you move up the pitch. Oh, wow, first action, sneaky git, dodge, fails, loads of punches. It is one of the best teams, versus one of the worst teams, but of the All World Alliance, get extra skills that, you know, could. Hypothetically, make the difference, um, but of course you wouldn't bet on it, and they are getting smashed to pieces. I feel like the team quality makes a bigger difference in, like the bash versus bash games, right? I I tried to explain this last night because, like, if you think if you think about it this way, right? If you've got an orc team with four guard and two mighty blow versus an orc team with three guard and one mighty blow. There's a huge advantage for the orc, right? The, the higher skill team. But if you're playing wood elves with them, it's pretty much the same team, right? Because at the end of the day, the extra guard isn't too impactful because you're struggling with the three and the extra mighty blow isn't that impactful because you only get one blitz a turn. Well, he left the ball blitz on here and he takes it and he gets the knockdown with Wrestle heroic play so oh I didn't even see that yeah maybe, maybe they've run out of time yeah. running out of time is it definitely a problem people face I used a lot of time in my match just now, I've got no idea, but that was a misclick. Oh, I just thought, it, I'll be honest with you, I zoned out with my idiotic explanation of how, how much teams matter. <laughs> it's turn six, so still okay here anyway. Fixed it, fixed the misclick both down. I like getting the mummy forward here. Yep. Very good. Oh, I'd have put this guy in one extra outright. Makes a screen with the. Makes a screen with the mummy. 
and just gets forward in general. Yeah, I'll be honest, I was so busy talking about how the fact that <laughs> all World Alliance are really screwed in this match. Didn't see that, but uh, nobody's perfect. And now, yeah, now he's absolutely back with barely a prayer anymore. It's turn seven, so we do have to get in range here, and there are dice rolls to be made. But it is a it is a block with block, so there we go. It does mean that guy can't be protecting the ball though. So it's like Oh wow, so he did that. I thought he'd have done that and then moved the ball, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, just move it so it's in range, whatever happens. But did make the block. One in twelve, nine, six chance of disaster. Are we going to go around this way? No, no I'm going to go here. Oh, one in 36 away. And another one. Ooh. But that was to stop him getting punched by him. So kind of necessary. I mean, well, necessary, right? Because the chance of you failing the one in 36 is less than the chance of him dodging, double rushing and powering you. Because they, they can use re-rolls to add to the chance, basically. So now he can only get touched by one player. Man, I love this. I love this mummy. Look how cool he is. Brilliant. No. Well, I don't really know what the point of doing these before this base was. Oh, the touchdown dance. Outrageous. Dimmy G will be loving that. So pretty good, pretty good half for the uh, undead. Removed two dwarves, including a garda, and used the apple. So a pretty good amount of banging. We have got the correct one turn defense here, probably. I, I didn't actually work it out, but that's what I estimate to be the best. And, of course, leaving the mummies off in case of a vicious ref. Could have also left off the guard and block... Um, like guard white and block ghoul in case of a vicious ref. Oh, but they are better for a timeout. And a timeout it is. Flip me, guys. But the catch has already moved. So we are all in on the halfling. The Orworld Alliance Dwarf blockers don't have um, block. <laughs> the linemen don't. The Orworld Alliance Blitzer and Troll Slayer both have block. But their linemen do not. So that chain means he gets to throw from one square further forward, which is nice, isn't it? There's now a more chance of just of just completely clearing this. And he is going for it this turn. Makes the catch. Oh no! He boneheaded. And now he pulls him back so he can't get hit as easily. He still can get hit though, surely. Yeah. Yeah, he can still get hit, so probably will. Oh, well, maybe not. I don't know, are they called linemen or blockers? Or? Yeah, they're called blockers, yeah. The blockers don't have block. <laughs> Hilarious. Just gonna one D. I think I would have made a rush to uh, make this a 2D, honestly. Oh, he's got no re-rolls. Oh, fair. Fair then. Fair just doing it the 1D. Well, here we go. Um, now I can blitz. Oh, I guess, yeah, you do add the handoff, right? You do add the handoff. Because it makes the throw so much more likely. Oh, 
But he'd be in such a better spot if he'd like had a catcher downfield. Right, so you hand off to him, and then the ogre goes and just lobs him a little way. Gets it. Oh no! Oh no, it was a... Was that a... Uh... Terrible throw, yeah, that was a... Essentially a uh, wildly inaccurate, yeah, yeah, terrible throw. Oh dear, well, sad. Sad, sad, sad. Kelethorn does not get a uh, hilarious halfling throw moment from this game yet. Looks like he's going to go for it again now, though, right? Oh. So he can and there's no defense now, there's no defense against the one turn. So I really don't hate going going for it right right away. But well, maybe we would have put this guy in the LOS, right? I mean definitely would have put this guy in the LOS. Oh he's not going for it. Okay. Don't need to if you just smash him on me down and get a catcher forward. Why is the dirty player? Because it's a zombie, maybe? It's like because it's a skeleton, and so you can put a zombie on instead. Oh, I don't like staying deep. I get that you don't want someone to run run down and get you, but if he wants to run around the back, I would just say let him, right? Because. You're going to struggle anyway, so I just hide him up here and then maybe just do a handoff. He's the supervisor. Who was the supervisor? Was it like the... Uh... <laughs> what, was it? what was the game with the... Su oh, it was a ghoul, wasn't it? There was a ghoul. There was a skillless ghoul that was the supervisor. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Now it's the uh, skeleton. This skeleton's his supervisor. Yeah, also, like, if you're up here, then, like, you know, you can throw up the end zone a bit easier, right? You can, um... I think I would have definitely gone here. And then it's something to give, let him think about, right? You could have definitely just been behind these three. And if he wants to blitz and try and base the thrower, then, you know, it's that much harder to do the other things that he wants to do as well. Whereas now, he hasn't come for your thrower, but now you're so far away that all you can do is... Hand over this blitzer. Which to be fair, this is a pretty good handoff. Blitz blitz the ghoul and then run down here. No, oh, he's already blitzed with the ogre. Oh, he's gonna block with him and just run with the gets a full pow. Surely he's gonna hand off the blitzer here, right? This, this seems this seems the best play to me. But yeah, I would have handed off the blitzer and blitzed with the blitzer, because then you've got tackle on the ghoul, and then it frees up this blitzer to come round and protect you a bit. Pretty nice, pretty nice, gets the screen. Pilling's okay, because um, better than it was before, because at least the uh, mummy hasn't got mighty blow when you're pilling. <sighs> I'm still calming down from my match. <laughs> right, there's the... Uh, there's a the Kaz. We're gonna blitz the halfling and then base the ball. Oh, it's gonna one D the ball. 
into a full pow. And a removal. Oh god. Wow. Does stop well, it makes this harder, right? You've got to do a three plus dodge now. Oh no, you can it, it does stop it, right? So there's a one D for the catcher. Oh. Oh god. Oh and removed. Oh. Oh flip me. Flip me. Well, this really was as a consequence of like Kelethorn having to win, right? Maybe if he was just playing for the draw, he would have like, you know, tried a normal offense and might have done better. But he really did have to like run forward and get an early score at, from being 1 0 down to try and turn around and make it a 2 1 win. So, yeah, he was forced into like, you know, looks like he's playing bad, right? Doing this potato play, but it, it was definitely the right play given the situation he was in. There we go, safe moves eventually. <laughs> I did that in my game actually, I stood a, stood a guy up halfway through my turn. It's inevitable isn't it really? I mean to be fair, elves have got more options than zombies and mummies but it, it does happen sometimes that you just don't do the correct thing. Okay, so that gives him the assist. And he dodges. <laughs> it's double skulls and gets the full power. But it's really hard, right? It's, it's so hard for him here. And he's down to one re roll. But things are still happening, there's still a chance for him. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? That means he can chain off the halfling so he doesn't have to blitz him. Yeah, I really like that. Like he could have also just blitzed the halfling, but this lets him blitz something else. Probably that blocker, right? The eye cage means that we're just going to get an instant 1D. With a 30% of working. Well, 33 otherwise than 30. Gets the full power. Can't actually be too mad at that, right? Because he's got, he's got wrestle. So the knockdown chance wasn't too ridiculous. Was there a chance to score here? Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not really, because he could have jumped. He could have jumped. He could have done the jump, right? <laughs> one, two, three. What about this guy? Can he do? No, obviously, if you go one way, you can't get it the other way. No, it's sad. Yeah, get get him as a scoring threat anyway, at least. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a bad team, and they have to win, so they have to roll loads of dice, like, and they're playing against the best team. Well, I say that. One of the best teams. So, yeah, they're not. It's very difficult for the All World Alliance. A 
block this block. Gets away with it. A block full blitz. There's a real argument for um, not caring so much about the ball this turn and just trying to blitz this halfling down, right? But getting the ball in hand is really, really good. So I do like this. The ogre looks sick. Uh, if you think this ogre looks sick, it does look pretty good actually. But uh, you need to see. You need to see. Is it Spinky's? I think Spinky's ogre for the Imperial nobility is out of this world. Probably the best player in the tournament. Oh well, he's pretty good though, he just makes the cards. So we go 4-3 dodge. Gets it. 2D. He's out of rerolls. And this is an instant 2 dice block. Only needs the push. And then he is away seven squares. And probably good. Yeah, I mean, definitely good. Kelethorn isn't winning now, right? So that is GG. And with the win, I mean, the very likely 2 0 win, Truk will secure the victory of the entire group, actually. Yes, he definitely wins this group. He'll be on seven points. And even if Tumish beats me, he'll be on six. So he cannot take over. Truk, if Truk does get this win, which looks almost a certainty at this point. <laughs> Running around, he's got to have his scoring threat. Makes the dodge. He could double uphill pal, right? No. He could have. And now he'll definitely be out of range next time. Providing there's no Hexa Skull here. <laughs> His only chance is six skulls. Doesn't get it. Armor broken. Can't even get thrown by the ogre. For an unlikely hero play. I mean, there's still no hero play because he'd have to score himself. Telethon, that's the problem. He'd have to score two. Like, it was it was over a while ago. To be honest. Fouls him. And, uh, yeah, I mean... There's a lot of damage, but again, it is it is undead with mummies and fouling and stuff. But uh, definitely, definitely decent dice for Truk, and makes the most of them. Gets his little touchdown dance in, wins two 0 and wins the group. So, unfortunately, the group isn't updated yet on Nuffle.xyz. But I can show you what it looked like after two games. Um, so Truk is now on seven points and has definitely won the group, regardless of what happens in my game versus Tunish. So there you go. Um, congratulations, Truk. Not only qualifying, but qualifying in first place. Group winner. Commiserations to Kelethorn. And thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.